the work done again. One with God, the Lord knows high. Hidden glory in creation. Now we feel in you our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Good morning. My name is Stephen Conkey, and I'm your community leader for this Mass. Welcome everyone to our celebration on this Palm Sunday. Thank you for joining us. Our guidelines require that your mask cover your mouth and nose throughout the entire mass. There will be no contact during the sign of peace, but please acknowledge each other's presence at this celebration. Today's first reading foreshadows what comes later. Isaiah's suffering servant continues to preach to those who are weary and hopeless despite the abuse he receives from his adversaries. St. Paul, in the second reading, attests to Jesus' sacrifice and victory. In the Passion, we hear St. Mark's account of Jesus' final hours before his death on the cross. Listening to the word of God today, let us echo the words of the centurion upon Jesus' death. Truly, this man was the Son of God. Let us take a few moments to contemplate Jesus' redemptive power over sin, darkness, and even death. Please stand as we welcome our pastor, Father Jerry Hurley. Let us worship together in song with our opening hymn, The King of Glory. The King of Glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of Glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promised of ages. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In all of Galilee, in city or village, he goes among his people, curing their illness. The 
King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Sing the Lord of David, son of Savior and brother. In all of Galilee was never another. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, May the grace and peace of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to our celebration on this Palm Sunday. We begin uh, by blessing the palms. We ask the Lord to be with us as we enter into this special week of his journey to Jerusalem and ultimately his passion, death, and resurrection. Let us pray. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery. That is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accompany this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. And therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may now have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray, and we ask him now to bless these branches that we have brought. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering 
and so merit a share in his resurrection and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I may know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled. I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from the buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. My God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me? Oh, who see me, laugh at me, they mock me, and they shake their heads. He relied on the Lord, let the Lord be his refuge. My God, my God, oh, why have you? dogs around me, they circle me about, wounded me and pierced me, I can cumber all my bones. My God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me? My clothing be divided for my garments casting lots. Oh, Lord, do not desert me, but hasten to my My God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me? I will praise you to my people and proclaim you in their midst. Oh, fear the Lord. Glory to his name. My God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me?
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance to be humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus. Every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every Welcome you to the reading of the Passion. There are two occasions we read the Passion of our Lord each year on Palm Sunday and then again on Good Friday. And we welcome you and invite you to join us in a lively faith. Customary position is standing. However, if you wish to be seated because it is a lengthy reading, please feel free to do so. But do join us in a lively faith as we respond to him and to his journey, because it is also our journey. Your parts will show up on the screens, and we encourage you to join in with great faith and energy. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spicanard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why was there a man as wasted perfumed oil? You think it had been sold? They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish you can do good for them, but you will not always have me with you. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. 
Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man you will meet carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, fully furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen. I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the mount of olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to them, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if, there were, that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep. 
for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priest, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter following him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, destroy this temple of Abraham, and within three days I'll build a Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. <laughs> Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him, deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said, and the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, <clears throat> But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystander said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, 
and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now the occasion of the feast he, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison alone with the, with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of Jews? They shouted again. Crucify. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted louder. Crucify. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed, and spitting on him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They passed, they pressed into service a passerby, Simon of a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to a place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull, and they gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucif crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. <laughs> Those passing by re reviled him, shaking their heads, saying, uh -huh. yeah. You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, come down. Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Save others cannot save himself. But the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And, and at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is following Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait! Let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last.
<laughs> the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the son of God. There was also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James, and of Joses and Salome. These women had followed him when he had, was in Galilee and ministered to him. There was also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of, of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in a linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph walked where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So we enter into the uh, most special week of the year as we come to the events of Jesus' saving passion, death, and resurrection. Last Sunday, we reflected some on that journey by looking at the stations of the cross. And we particularly looked at three stations, and I said we would look at another three this week, actually four, um, adjusted it to four. But well, we looked at three, the first, the uh, fourth, and the fifth, and those encounters. The stations originally, they were called the stations because the idea was a person would be stationary and stand in front of them and try to comprehend the mystery that is unfolding there and how it engages them and their life with the journey of Jesus along the way. And so we pick up today, we look at the other four, the sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. What a dramatic and wonderful event indeed. Veronica may be seen as a composite of the women of Jerusalem, which is in the eighth station, the women that Jesus encountered. They were all weeping for him, and they were distressed about this journey that he was making, how they wished to save him from it, but there was nothing they could do, just like Mary, his mother. They were all restrained. He was moving toward his fate, and there was nothing they could do to stop that. We all know the simple truth of Veronica. She couldn't stop what was happening, but she gave what she could, her veil, to help him in that hour of distress, and Jesus returned her gratitude with the impression on that veil. The truth and legend is very powerful. Jesus left a lasting impression acknowledging her compassion and her care. Maybe this station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus, is a statement that all who show compassion are imaged in the likeness of Christ like the image he left her. Whenever we serve in his name, we are being like him. An essential ingredient of discipleship is to have a well-used veil. How is your veil? 
The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. People who stand at this station take time to recognize, recognize themselves from experience. Here I stand <clears throat> with my own sin falling again and again in the face of my own sin. I complain about the faults of others and their shortcomings. But here I stand at this station, third time, falling again and again. Here I stand with my own sin. The nasty word out of my mouth that I just couldn't prevent or stop. The, um, the quick judgment that I make before I hear all of the facts, before I hear the whole story, I am quick to judge and adjudicate. I can't wait to hear the whole thing. Maybe it might be different. The gossip, the ongoing gossip, talking about them, the other, I wouldn't say it to their face. Why would I say it to somebody else? The addiction, the anger, the resentment, the judgment. I stand there with all of those. No matter how hard I try, no matter how many times I confess it, no matter how bad I feel afterward, I just can't seem to shake it off. My favorite sin. I keep falling just like Jesus. Maybe this station, the ninth station, should read, Jesus gets up again for the third time. Oh God, of second and third chances, here I am again, your servant. Please help me. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross, forgiving his enemies. I stand here accused, condemned. I who still hold grudges and harbor a hard heart. Give me the grace, Lord, to forgive like you. To stand there not complaining about the judgment. Help me to let go so that I may possess your spirit. Give me that spirit of the unknown woman who at Ravensbrück concentration camp wrote this prayer and then pinned it to the body of a dead young girl. She said, O oh Lord, remember not only the men and women of good will, but also those of ill will. But do not remember all the sufferings they have inflicted upon us. Remember rather the fruits we have brought thanks to this suffering. Our comradeship, our loyalty, our humility, our courage, our generosity, the greatness of heart that has grown out of all of this, and when they, our torturers, come to judgment, let all of the fruits that we have borne be their forgiveness. Jesus hanging on the cross and forgiving his enemies, inviting us to be like him. How can I still choose to be unforgiving? The 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. Many stand at this station just weeping. What can I do now? It just seems so dark, almost futile. Why should I keep going on? I'm just at my wit's end. I have my own tomb. It's dark and dry and I am tired. Relationships that are broken with family and with friends. I try to pray. Sometimes I just can't. 
My mind keeps wandering. And when I do pray, I just don't seem to get answers anyway. God just seems to have abandoned me at times. My faith seems to be routine and empty. I feel like the stone has been rolled across my person, my heart. Who's going to take away that stone? Who's going to roll that stone away? Oh, God of surprises. Please roll that stone away. As we enter into this most holy week and journey with you, Lord, as we begin to come forth from restrictions and social distancing and pandemic, let us not be the same. Let us come out of our tomb, wonderfully and powerfully renewed by your saving actions, which we commemorate in this week. Let us profess our faith in him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus turned to his Father in his final moments on the cross, just as he had done throughout his life's journey. And so we turn to our Father now and offer him the prayers of our brothers and sisters. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that recounting the passion and death of our Savior will deepen our faith and strengthen our resolve to bear witness to the awesome sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations might choose to settle differences peacefully, rejecting the alternatives of war and violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all society may respect the basic dignity of all members of humanity, even those convicted of terrible crimes, and see that the death penalty is abolished by all governments everywhere. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may always be willing to help our family members, friends, neighbors, and strangers carry their crosses, knowing that the Lord recognizes their weight and is always willing to share our burden. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all who died recently, especially May Patrick, grandmother of C.J. Bennett, and Joan Mueller, mother of Ed Mueller, and Father Brian Caskey. May they experience his eternal peace in the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our departed relatives and friends who have died in the hope of rising again, especially Greg Begonia, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for the repose of the soul of Domingo Quino Sr., father of Domingo, 
who uh, lived in, here in our parish for many years. We ask you, Lord, to reward him with the gift of life and to bless his family who now mourn his passing. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you write your law upon our hearts. Give us the courage to follow your law of love and hear these prayers which we offer you on behalf of our brothers and sisters in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread. We offer you the work of human hands and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of ours may be acceptable to God, who is our almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all the holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once and for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all of the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as we sing. Holy, 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 Lord God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, you who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth the power of your Spirit to sanctify these gifts so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. of faith when we this blood and drink this cup we proclaim our death O Lord until you come And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we celebrate Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you've led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Look at favor on your church's offering in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice that has been entrusted to us. And grant that by the power of your spirit of love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity that together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all of your people, we may walk in the ways of faith and hope, and we may strive to bring joy and trust into our world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone, Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. And there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Paul, and all of your saints, we shall praise and exalt you. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now we pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress as we await in blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you, and let us be grateful for that peace, and let's acknowledge it to one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Let us now join together in singing our communion hymn, Behold the Lamb of God. Sorrows of us all. So 
look down in a stand, rejected and scorned, and by his wounds we are healed. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold.
Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so that by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God continue to bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mass is ended and we go now in peace to love and to serve God and each other. Thank you all for being here. Glad you could be with us. And as things continue to improve, we still continue our prayer and continue to be attentive and responsive that we may move through this effectively. The Knights of Columbus will hold an Easter egg hunt for children of the parish this weekend after the 1030 Mass. Children will be divided into appropriate age groups to help maintain the social distancing. All children over the age of two and all adults will be required to wear masks. We have scheduled a penance service for Monday, March 29th at 6 p.m. We will have several priests available and will require masks to be worn in observance of social distancing. Our Holy Week registration will close at midnight on Palm Sunday for Holy Thursday, Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, and Easter Sunday. Please register by one of the following methods, online, the New Church app, or by the link in the e-bulletin. Please check the St. Paul website for our Holy Week schedule. <coughs> we will now say our parish commitment prayer. Loving God. We come to you as disciples and members of St. Paul Catholic Church. We praise you and thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed on our community. Lord, we turn to you for wisdom and guidance in these days that are so full of fear, distrust, worry, stress, and immense challenge. Help us to find our way through this darkness. You are our only hope. You are our Messiah, our Savior. We ask you to give us light to see more clearly the small steps that each one of us can take to be instruments of your peace, hope, acceptance, and unconditional love. Help us to make decisions that are born in you and not in our own perceived ideas of rightness and wrongness. Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with gladness and give us a rich, deep share of your peace and love so that we may extend that peace and love in kind to one another. May we each do our share to be united in these efforts to build up your kingdom, bridge divisions, heal wounds, and strengthen relationships. Here is my promise, Lord, I commit to look for the face of God in every face I see. I commit to respect and act with empathy and compassion toward all, especially those who are struggling and those whose beliefs, values, and lifestyles are different from mine. I will do my part to stop the spread of the virus, prejudice, racism, poverty, and negativity. I can only do this through you, with you, and in you, Almighty God. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Amen. Please remember, tonight at midnight is the cutoff date for signing up. Those of you at home that are tuning in, if you plan to come to any of the services, uh, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Please sign up before midnight so that we can be appropriately prepared as we move into this wonderful Holy Week. Uh, Pen and service tomorrow night, we have a number of priests. Uh, they will be in the offices hearing confessions. We'll have a brief uh, orientation when we come together here at 6 o'clock, and then we will go to the confessions, and then you will leave. We will not have the common conclusion as we traditionally have done, uh, but we will move forward from there once you have gone to individual confession. Uh, the examination of conscience is uh, on the table. 
We encourage you to pick up a copy as a part of your preparation for the grace of that sacrament. Let us all praise our God in song with our closing hymn, Lift High the Cross. Cross, the love of Christ proclaimed till all the world adored his sacred name. Led on their way by this triumphant song. Servant of the crucified, bears on the broken the seal of Him who died. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim till.